everybody, welcome to week two of our All In Groups. We're gonna have a great time today. Uh, listen, each week you're gonna be challenged to grow in total devotion so that you can reach your full potential. Today, specifically, we're talking about trust. But before we do, check out this story. My parents actually invited me to Epic. We all just sort of decided that we loved the feel of it. We loved how friendly everybody was and how welcoming everybody was. And we just sort of felt like home from the first time we walked in. So I started serving on production at Roxborough because it was right up the street from where I live. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I really liked getting to serve on Sunday mornings and all of that. And then it sort of evolved and grew and now I am the production director at Fairmount. So I head up all of production there. It was pretty much right before I decided to take on a leadership position um, as the production director. I was still sort of scared and worried about it at that time, um, but I sort of felt like God was whispering and sort of nudging me in that direction. And so it's been really cool to look back and see how much I've grown through just everything that God's been providing for me. Everything in your life you sort of are given puzzle pieces and you can either decide to try to figure out where they go yourself or you can ask God and listen to where he wants you to put it. When you trust God and put the pieces where he knows that they're supposed to go in the grand plan of everything, you never know what effect that could have on other people around you. You just have to be willing to let go and trust that God's plan is greater than anything you could ever think of. Um, and you sort of have to, um, you have to be all in in order to trust and not know exactly how everything's going to work out. It sort of makes me think through every aspect of my life, not just um, the time that I serve on Sunday mornings or the times that I'm spending with, um, with people that I know through Epic. Um, it's sort of looking at every area of my life with my generosity with, um, with money, not just with time. That, that is, uh, that's a struggle for me. And that's one of the areas of my life that I've been realizing that um, I sort of can take another step forward and go actually all in with every single part of my life. Um, and so that's been especially challenging with the, the latest messages from Ken. Um, just, just realizing what all actually means. One of the things that I'm really excited uh, about this all-in initiative is um, our move from Fairmount to Northern Liberties. Um, there's so much that we're going to be able to do through that building. Yes, it's going to make our lives easier, but because of that, we're going to be able to make things so much better for everybody that comes through those doors. We're going to have time to, to just sit down and think, okay, how can we make this a better experience? That's one of the things that I'm most excited about with that move and with this whole initiative in general. We're gonna be able to reach so many people and it's gonna be awesome. What's up, Epic? Hey, I'm pumped to be with you today for week two of our All In Groups discussion. As a quick recap, last week we talked about Abram, whose name is later changed to Abraham, and how God made him an incredible promise. Even though Abram was 75 years old, and his wife Sarah had not been able to have kids, God tells him that he's gonna be the father of many nations, that he's gonna to have tons of descendants. Now in response to that promise, God literally says, go to the land, I will show you. There's so little detail in that. Basically he's saying, trust God wherever God leads. Now, that's simple instruction, but as we can probably attest to, that's not an easy instruction to follow. And so our challenge was to trust and follow God into the unknown, even when we don't know what's going to happen. And the reason trusting God is and doing whatever he asks isn't always easy is because we don't know the outcome. There's a key component in our growth as disciples when we choose to trust that even in our uncertainty, we can find God to be faithful. After all, it wouldn't be trust if we knew the outcome from the start, would it? In the same way, Abram had to wrestle and trust with this uncertainty he had, just like we do. I mean, how crazy is this? He received this promise to be the father of a ton of people at the young, ripe age of 75. And it seemed quite illogical, even at that point. Spoiler alert, Abram didn't have a child at 80. 
Not even at 85. He hit 90, still no kids. 95, nope, not yet. It ends up that Sarah didn't get pregnant until Abram was 99 years old. And his son Isaac was born when Abram was 100. 100! Can you believe that? Can you imagine how awkward that would be at Isaac's Little League baseball games? Well, hey, uh, which one is your great-grandson? Uh, none of them. That's my son out there on first base. Oh, I'm sorry. I just assumed. Here's the deal. That was 25 years. 25 years of waiting. That couldn't have been easy. In fact, there came a point when Abram struggled to trust that at one point, he and Sarah agreed that Abram should sleep with Sarah's servant just to help speed things along for God. So Sarah's servant, Hagar, had a son named Ishmael. But God made it clear that this was not the way he was going to fulfill his promise. He wasn't going to use a human contrived alternative, attempted solution. He was going to do the supernatural. So while he waited, Abram struggled. He struggled to trust. But what I love about God is that even though our faith is sometimes weak, God's faithful. And he gives us just what we need to keep going right when we need it. So after Abram messed up by trying to run his own play, God appears to him again to remind him of the plan. This is Genesis 17, verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. Now, even though Abram's faith was weak at times, God chose to renew his covenant with Abram and literally changed his name as a symbol that he wanted Abram, now Abraham, to focus not on his past and his doubts, but on his future and on the promises of God. He wanted Abram to fully trust him, to be totally devoted. This all-in journey that we're embarking on is about boldly trusting God by giving him our total devotion as individuals and as a church. And we believe that as we trust God and his goodness, we will realize and experience our full potential, both in our personal, spiritual lives and in the things that God has prepared for us as a church to do. And that's why our primary goal is 100% participation. We would like every person in our church to decide that they're going to pursue God's plan for them with everything they have. And as we align our desires with God's, we'll be positioned to achieve our secondary goal, to raise $8 million over two years to advance the mission and vision that God has given us. Just like God was faithful to Abram, he's gonna be faithful to us. And just like Abram, we have things in our lives presently and things in our past that make us question God's faithfulness. We must see God's faithfulness to Abram to be an example of his faithfulness to us. And when we recognize that thought as reality, we begin to move toward living the life he's created us to live. And that's a life that's totally devoted, beginning to experience our full potential. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about God's faithfulness to you. And whether or not that's been easy for you to come by or difficult for you to accept, I want you to begin to share that in your groups. Begin to talk through, is that gonna be easy for you or is that gonna be difficult for you? And as you work through your questions, share honestly and let's see where God leads us.